As the world transitions to sustainable energy, it is crucial to find new energy sources. While batteries are more cost-effective and portable than hydrogen fuel cells, which represent one answer, the demand for battery-powered devices is rising. EVs, plug-in hybrid, and hybrid electric vehicles rely heavily on batteries. Electricity is only kept in batteries in EVs as a kind of energy. The most popular battery types utilized as energy storage devices in EVs, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, and hybrid electric vehicles include lithium-ion batteries, nickel-metal hydride batteries, lead-acid batteries, and ultra-capacitors. Due to their excellent energy efficiency, high power-to-weight ratio, exceptional performance at high temperatures, and high energy ratio, lithium-ion batteries are the most frequently used in EVs. This is a crucial factor for EV batteries and a better energy ratio per weight than conventional energy storage technologies. As a result, EVs can travel farther on a single charge with a lighter battery. Therefore, today, we'll examine graphene energy storage, a high-performance, green, and promising EV battery technology, and how it might affect Tesla and the EV industry. Stay with me till the end to know the complete details about graphene batteries. First, let's discuss the battery and its role. Batteries have become incredibly commonplace. The electrical energy they store can then be used to produce light, heat, or motion. Almost all electronic equipment is battery-powered. Batteries power items like TV remote controls, cell phones, flashlights, toys, and even our vehicles. An electrolyte is a chemical that sits between a battery's two electrical terminals and acts as a conduit for transferring electrical charge between them. The electrolytes migrate as ions when a battery is connected to an external circuit board, enabling the chemical reactions to be completed at the terminals and providing energy to the external circuit. Current can flow out of a battery due to the movement of the ions inside the battery. Next up, we are going to know about graphene. What do you guys know about graphene? A single layer or monolayer sheet of carbon atoms joined together in a repeating hexagonal pattern is known as graphene. It only has an atom's worth of thickness. Graphite is created by stacking monolayers of graphene on top of one another. A one millimeter thick sheet of graphite has around three million layers of graphene due to the average carbon atom's width of 0.33 nanometers. Stronger than steel yet lighter than aluminum, harder than diamond but more elastic than rubber, the strongest known substance is graphene. Other astonishing properties of graphene exist. For instance, it transmits heat two times better than diamond, has an electrical conductivity 13 times higher than copper, and has high electron mobility 100 times faster than silicon. Why graphene is so special? The fact that graphene-based batteries charge so quickly is a major problem. ElectJet's forthcoming Apollo Ultra can quickly charge its 10,000 mAh capacity in a half hour based on our testing. Considering that most batteries of this capacity require a few hours to fully charge, this really sinks in. A 100-watt charger is important for Apollo Ultra's performance, but the graphene cathode does the bulk of the work. Then how does a graphene battery function? I will give you the answer. First, let's quickly review the operation of lithium-ion batteries first. A battery consists of two primary compartments divided by a porous membrane. A battery draws electrons from one compartment to the other when it is being charged. The membrane stops those electrons from returning to the beginning side, where they naturally belong. Instead, these electrons have a route back once a device that requires power completes the battery circuit. In order to return to their starting place, those electrons jump through all the necessary hoops. In comparison to other rechargeable batteries, how does graphene fare? Similar devices can be powered by energy transferred through graphene and lithium-ion batteries. Although lithium-ion and graphene batteries have similar designs and use, their energy transfer rates, safety features, and service lives are very different. Heat is the primary factor that makes graphene batteries much more efficient than conventional batteries. The resistance of a device's conductors causes a significant quantity of extra heat energy to be produced whenever energy is transferred to it. Lithium-ion batteries have a relatively high barrier to energy flow, which results in comparatively high heat output. Resistance rises more as the lithium is heated unevenly, resulting in a cycle of increasing inefficiency. The battery and the actual device are both harmed by this extra heat. Even though contemporary Li-ion batteries are generally safe and reliable, catastrophic battery failures can still cause an explosion or fire. 
With its extraordinarily low levels of resistance, graphene is one of the most conductive materials available today. This low level of resistance aids in reducing the amount of extra heat energy, maintaining overall temperatures within a reasonable and acceptable range. Lower resistance is ideal for the transfer of high-speed, high-energy electricity. Real Graphene USA, one of the top businesses for using graphene batteries, claims that. Are you getting new information from this video? Please like the video so that I can understand that you really learnt something new from this video. Graphene is almost an ideal electrical conductor. This makes it possible for electricity to move freely. This allows for up to five times faster charging while significantly slowing the heating process that lithium batteries experience. Additionally, the battery life is increased by five times as many charging cycles. Graphene's Potential in the Battery Industry Graphene is just now being widely known and used in battery technologies. The cost of producing tiny graphene sheets, which is exceedingly costly, is the main challenge. However, the potential uses for graphene will expand as production methods improve and become more affordable. The combination of graphene and conventional lithium-ion batteries is its most potential application. This is accomplished by adding graphene to the battery's cathodes and anodes. In the simplest terms, energy enters the battery through the anode and leaves through the cathode. Therefore, most resistance and heat production occur at the cathode and anode. More energy can be delivered more quickly and safely by lowering resistance and raising the conductivity of the cathode and anode materials. Large corporations are very interested in developing graphene batteries, including Tesla Motors, Samsung and Microsoft. We may anticipate accelerating the development of new technologies as funding and interest in graphene increase. So guys, as we are discussing graphene, a new word comes to mind. What is curved graphene? So let's discuss it. The primary technological component of skeleton is its curved graphene, which is a special kind of graphene. Instead of resembling single-layer graphene sheets, the substance more closely resembles graphene that has broken into 3D shapes at the nanoscale. Contrary to other graphene kinds, curved graphene may be placed into electrodes considerably more easily. It nevertheless has a high conductivity and huge surface area characteristics of graphene. Skeleton is able to produce supercapacitors with good performance thanks to this. Fast charging and the high power density that supercapacitors are known for are still possible thanks to the technology, which boosts energy density by almost a factor of 10. Today, two common uses are grid energy storage technologies and wind pitch control. Wind pitch control system Lead acid batteries have historically been used to power wind pitch control systems, but newer turbines are using supercapacitors instead since they perform better. Many of these turbines use skeletons capacitors, and this market is only expected to expand in the future. In addition, the grid is a key area where skeleton supercapacitor can be used. In order for these facilities to quickly release their stored energy, which can be as large as 100 megawatts, skeleton supercapacitors are crucial. The Skelcap Ultra Capacitor line from Skeleton is distinctive in this ultra capacitor market. The cells offer up to four times more power density than the competition and are covered by 11 patent families that cover everything from the raw material through the synthesis and production processes as well as a decreased ESR, which results in an improved application lifetime. Skelcap Ultra Capacitors offer an energy density up to two times higher than even the most advanced cells our competitors make thanks to the company's curved graphene technology. Additionally, their low internal resistance makes them substantially more efficient and lose up to five times as little energy as heat. This has the additional benefit of allowing for the removal or downsizing of cooling systems. The Skelcap battery's dependability and longevity are further highlighted by Skeleton. Curved graphene offers a substantial reliability advantage compared to activated carbons due to its excellent chemical purity. In addition, the materials used in scale cap ultracapacitors are subjected to specific purification and post-treatment processes, which produce lifetimes of 15 that dominate the industry. KERS, or Kinetic Energy Recovery Systems, which store and reuse braking energy for acceleration or lights, is an excellent example. Power quality is another excellent application. Even a very slight change in power quality, lasting only a few microseconds, can cause tens of millions of dollars worth of damage 
if ultracapacitors are not used to protect the grid, equipment, and infrastructure right away. The largest ultracapacitor factory in Europe and the world, Skeleton's production facility in Grossrosdorf, Germany, is ISO 9001 and 14001 certified. So what do you think about this graphene batteries? Do you want to use this batteries? Let me know your thought in the comment section.